Hi friends. So in this uh, session, this is actually a clarification of one of the doubts that have uh, come across to me uh, from one of the subscribers of my channel. So so what's uh, there is a query from Sandeep uh, who's who uh, put me a note, who shared a note with me saying that he has a database issue where he has some tables on on a uh, from a database which needs to be uh, populated uh, in a flat file to an archive path. Uh, he says that uh, the example could be there are five tables in, in his database and he needs to load them into a text file in one folder uh, and, and he wants to know how this can be done. So let's uh, look into this requirement uh, and, and uh, try to build a uh, size package for the, for the same thing. So uh, considering uh, I'm taking an example of two tables considering the two tables are, are my sales table and the employees table and uh, uh, we would be trying to export the same so to do so uh, let's uh, try, uh, try to see how we build the SSIS package so the first step uh, is to uh, for this SSIS package is we look at the variables that we declare uh, I have declared the variable archive path this archive path is nothing but uh, if you look at uh, this path it's actually this one so so here is where this is the path where you would want your uh, flat files to be uh, put uh, after this the SSIS uh, churns out uh, the data from from the database tables and and the next is we declare of uh, a variable of object type uh, and we call it uh, var collect table and, and another uh, variable of var pass table which is of string type so these are the three variables that we declare moving on we create a SQL task in this SQL task uh, what uh, I have done is I've connected you uh, and also yeah first of all you would have uh, you'll have to create a OLEDB data source uh, connection manager so this if you look at this is a, a OLEDB uh, connection manager pointing to the database from which you would want your tables to be uh, exported uh, to the flat file so Right, so this is uh, this is my uh, server and the database which I would be connecting to. Next, I have a SQL task which uh, uses the same connection manager that I have and use the query. Uh, so this is the query for uh, pulling the table. So you can put the table's name directly and uh, put the in this query. This would give you uh, the names of the table in this format. So this is one way you put it uh, and also the result set, set part set it to full res, full result set and uh, in the result set mapping map this result set remember since it's an OLDB connection you put it to zero set this value to zero and the, and map it to the variable which is uh, of object type I mean if you remember we had declared a variable of object type uh, called the cut uh, collect table so map it and then set it OK. Next is the for each loop. Pull down the for each loop uh, container, open this, and in the collection, use for each ADO enumerator. Use uh, for each ADO enumerator and uh, use the variable source variable as the collect table, which was of object type, rows in the first table, and then map the variable, I mean the object variable to that of the pass table variable and with the index of 0 so that uh, so that each of the values that is actually it will loop loop across the values which means that these these value if, it, if there are five values it will loop across each of these uh, this uh, value right so uh, map it across and put it okay and within within the for each loop we have a sql task now what does this SQL task do is there is no result set as such only there are parameters parameter mapping which are input parameters the parameters are the table name and the archive path remember since it's again a OLEDB connect, a connection the SQL uh, mapping of parameter mapping will uh, will take will not take the name but will take 0 and 1 that is how you know you map parameters so this is you will also learn to map parameters in SQL task and next you have this sequels 
string which is actually using will come to the heart of it this is the SQL string so this is the SQL string that that is being used there uh, if you see see this is the SQL string that is being used uh, what is this SQL string doing is we are leveraging the XP underscore command shell program and, and within which we are using the BCP utility if you remember my uh, my article on, on, on BCP utility we are leveraging the same and we are running it from from the uh, SQL server remember for that uh, just check your SQL server to see if the value of XP command shell is set to be 1 this value should be uh, configured value should be set to be 1 if it is not so you can use this command and configure it and then reconfigure your server uh, so this is uh, a dynamic you know this is the string that would BCP out your table name uh, and the path with the table name dot txt so this is uh, your string so that's your SSIS package for you now if you run it this is the folder where we are going to export the data so let's run the package where did we miss it out right so the files have been generated in your archive path and the tables table file uh, table contains the content so this is in a standard format uh, that is with your bcp utility uh, it is it is exporting the data now let me delete both of both of them and use a, a, a different way what i have done is i have created a export table which is uh, having identity and a table name and, and inserted into it two records if you select if you select this you would get this is the value rather if I select star this is the value so I mean you can use leverage a table also so let's use this instead of let me use this there is no other change I'm giving you one other uh, another option so this is the, the method 2 right so this is again generating you the files right so this is uh, your second way where, where you would uh, have your table names kept in another table which you want to export that's it now let's get back to the more conventional way of SSIS which is without the BCP utility uh, so here just I have a sequence container and I have used a DFT data flow task data flow task where I have created two threads one of them is for the employee this is the query for selecting the data from employee table and it maps down to your employee flat file this is the source if you look at this is where I have picked it from and next the, the destination is flat file destination and and for flat file destination I, you have to create a connection manager so if you edit this you would see the connection manager of for the flat file so so this is the flat file and where you would hard code or, or, or map it this is, this is not a dynamic solution but this is a hard coded solution so which has uh, the path where the file needs to be kept and uh, the column mapping and the delimiters but the only advantage that you get is, is you can have it in a more customized way I mean you will have uh, you, uh, BCP is kind of standard for, for uh, most of the things uh, in RDBMS yet uh, this would give you the column names and also the delimiters that you would want ca carriage or vertical bar between the data so here we are using the connection manager and mapping and we are mapping the data again uh, we are use, doing the same thing for sales table also so that's your sales table with the connection manager of sales tables being like this 
that's it uh, the only other thing that I would want to point you out is uh, we have used multi-threading which means we could have used two data flow tasks containing threads uh, of source and destinations if you see a data flow task uh, property you would find engine threads so this is uh, set to 10 by default uh, uh, which uh, we are leveraging here which means both of these threads these threads will be running in parallel I mean uh, concurrently if we use two data flow tasks uh, it would be another story so so uh, this is uh, one of the things that I wanted to show next we are uh, let's run it and, and generate the data as you can see we have generated the data but this data that has been generated will be more customized in terms of delimiters and and also the column names so that will be uh, uh, the difference I hope uh, this is uh, helpful to you Sandeep. Thank you so much.